What's going on guys, Teddy Baldessar here. So ever since starting this channel, every single year that I've been posting videos, I have done some type of video looking at micro brands. And micro brands are a little bit of a friction point with some people, they're not for everybody by any means, but they're a great way to get a variety for those that maybe don't want to look at a mainstream brand. So after handling dozens and dozens of different micro brands out there, I wanted to take a look at around 15 or so brands and specific models from those brands that I think are really cool watches that maybe you should take a look at. All these watches that I have here, I've had personal hands-on experience with, so I think that'll be helpful. And I also have a link in the description. I just put together a blog that looks at 40 micro brands, ones that go beyond just the ones mentioned here today. So if you do want to just maybe learn a little bit more about different brands that are out there doing some interesting things, I'll also link down below. But hopefully this could be a cool way to see some brands that maybe you don't see all the time and maybe could be put on your radar finally. And while you're there, definitely check out the different watches and straps that I have available. All that also supports the content. And if you see something that you like and you have some questions, make sure to book a call with me. So at the top, you can just click book a call, just pick a time that works best for you. And I'll have my actual calendar on there. We can schedule something out. I've been trying to keep it pretty open so I can take more calls with you guys if you guys do have any questions. But before we look at these watches, I think one thing that's important is to kind of define what I see a micro brand as because I think there's a little bit of some gray area. It's not very black and white on what constitutes being a micro brand. So just to develop a definition here, what I consider a micro brand. So to me, a micro brand is a limited production watch company that typically specializes in a particular style that does not have extensive resources to produce their own in-house calibers or other proprietary parts. Now where this definition gets a little bit gray is differentiating from independents, which I think are a little bit more say established or have say a master watchmaker at the helm, maybe like a Richard Hobbring at Hobbring II, for example, that would be a good example there. Or they've just been around for quite a bit of time or they have a lot of people at the helm that are just working at the company. A lot of things to consider here is again, not very black and white, but I think that at least gives us the baseline of the type of brands that we're going to be looking at. And the other thing too is I kind of already mentioned it, but micro brands certainly aren't for everybody. A lot of people just want the reputation, what to expect from a mainstream brand, which is totally fine. And I think in a lot of cases, it makes a ton of sense. But for those that want something different, maybe they want to have a relationship with the founder and have that more hands-on boutique experience. That really, I think, comes from micro brands and really can't be matched by larger brands out there. And I think also from a design point of view, in some cases, they're providing things that I think enthusiasts want rather than what the mass market wants. And I think that can be very appealing to somebody looking in this direction. Now to start us off here, looking at the first brand, we have Astor Banks. Now a while back, I saw a watch from this brand. It was their Sea Ranger. And it was this grayed out bezel version that I just fell in love with immediately. And I saw the price tag. I saw everything else about the brand. It seemed like a very solid brand. I saw a good reputation with it. So I got to handle one of their pieces, the blue dial variant, the gray bezel version seems to be sold out everywhere, but I thought these were just really attractive. And also from a case and spec point of view, I think we're pretty good in where they're residing in the marketplace. So $850 solid bracelet, very wearable case and lug to lug. So 45.5 on that lug to lug 40 millimeter case. And you're also getting a Salita SW200 movement within with a very capable water resistance, really nice design on this. I also just love that bezel on this piece. And then in addition, the inner 24 hour scale, that's I think is very useful for me. And it kind of reminded me with just that second hand, a little bit of some vintage Omega Genevs, for example, with that kind of dip second hand, which is a very awesome look in my opinion that I have always enjoyed. But Astor Banks based in Chicago, I've seen other bloggers and people mentioning this brand a little bit more. So I wanted to take a closer look and I have to admit, I was impressed initially when I saw it and also when getting the watch in person, I think for the money, I think it's a really solid brand. And I'd love to see more watches from the brand because I think their approach to design is really, really solid. And speaking of good design, I think that's a perfect segue into the next brand, which is Brew Watches. And Brew was first put on my radar a few years back. They were actually mentioned in the first video that I ever put on my channel about micro brands. And I eventually connected with the founder, Jonathan. He's a really awesome guy. He's an industrial designer. I think he also teaches it as well. So really into this world of industrial design. And I think you can see that with the connection with many of his pieces and how it all comes together. I actually did an interview with him in New York City at some random park. I can't necessarily recall the park that we had, but I posted it on the channel a while back. And his overall approach to design, I think really resonated with me. There's a lot of just reinterpretation in the world 
of micro brands, which I think is, you know, that's good. I mean, in a lot of ways, because it's providing products that maybe you normally would not be able to get at more attainable prices. But with Jonathan, I always looked at his watches as being something very fresh and different, or at least really building on something and taking in a totally different direction. So that was something that really always just appealed me overall with his approach to design. And I can link down below to the video I'm talking about where he kind of talks through this. But the watch that I have here today is the Retrograph. It has dimensions of 38 millimeters by 41.5 millimeters, has this more rounded off square kind of style case, kind of, it's, it's just really cool. It also takes a lot of inspiration from espresso machines, which you can kind of see, I like those undertones with the piece itself. It has a Mecca Quartz Seiko movement inside, water resistance of 50 meters, and a nice price of $350, which I think is very attainable. And for what this watch is trying to be, kind of that fun piece, I think at that price range, that makes it a little bit even easier and not pricing itself out where you can have some fun at a price range that I think is more than attainable. Now, another early brand that I was drawn to in the early stages of getting into the micro brand space was Baltic, and they're based in France. I think their first watch that came on the scene that I was really uh, in interested in uh, was the Bicompact. So it was that kind of panda style chronograph, that chronograph, vintage chronograph. They came out with the panda version, which I think sold out very quickly, uh, but very awesome looking watches. And they eventually moved into the world of dive watches. And that was with the Aquascaf and a watch that I think is very attractive. Falls at a price range, $600 to $700, very wearable case. You're also getting a dome sapphire crystal on this piece. But I think the thing that really stood out from Baltic has always been their approach to design across the board. They just recently unveiled these new salmon dial watches that sold out like instantly. But I think that just overall approach, vintage styling, attainable price points has always just been a winning formula. And I think Baltic has really carved out a nice niche in this space of micro brands. So if you've been following me for some time, you probably know I'm based in Northeast Ohio here in the United States. And I recently did a video, it was actually a few months back, it was a ball watch company. They have roots in Cleveland, Ohio. And I really enjoyed putting a video together where you can have some connection to where I'm from and kind of combining this world of kind of hometown pride with something that, again, I really enjoy, which is watches. And in the last few years, I actually was able to connect with a local based micro brand, but they're known way more beyond just this local region of Northeast Ohio. They have pretty much like a cult-like following because they've been producing watches for 10 years and they're very popular in the everyday carry, the knives, and also I think firearm community as well. And with that kind of being said, it kind of gives them a little bit more of a kind of a cue into what this brand is all about. And that's Loom Tech, developing some very well-constructed pieces that can actually just take a beating like no other. And I've got to meet the guys behind the brand really kind guys, they'll spend probably more time than probably what they should with me whenever I'd come in being a curious guy and we were able to connect on watches. They talk very openly and candidly about movements, which ones they liked, how you know the regulation process was, their casing, using of different materials, all of that. It was just very open about it. And I was just very impressed with the products that they're delivering. But the watch that really stood out for me, for them, and just kind of what worked for myself was their C5, their C6, and C7. So there's these are basically their more field style watches and coming in a case size that I think is very attractive and are very well put together. So 38 millimeters in terms of the case, you're getting a dome sapphire crystal, screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, a highly regulated Seiko movement, and I'm not kidding on that. They, these guys really take that regulation very seriously. They case up all the watches in their facility here in Northeast Ohio, and then also are regulating all these watches and really getting them performing at great spec. And they also offer lifetime regulation uh, upkeep for any of the watches that they have. And I think for the type of consumer that they're going for, kind of that more everyday carry type, type of person that wants a no nonsense watch, they have a lot of other more interesting designs too, uh, like their combat series, which are a little bit too large for me, but in terms of an overall style point of view, very attractive looking pieces and wanted to give a mention to Loom Tech. They're one of the more popular micro brands that I don't really necessarily see mentioned very much in this online YouTube community for watch enthusiasts, but probably should. But speaking of everyday watches for around that thousand dollar range, we now have another one that I think is one of my favorites, which is the Traska Summiteer. So I reviewed this watch last year. I was initially drawn to Traska looking at their free divers, which I think were very interesting and I think very good looking and where they fell with price made a lot of sense. But at the time of reaching out to the brand and actually asking for one of their watches to review, it was right when they were lining up to release a new watch with their Summiteer, which was more of an everyday, kind of more explorer style watch that looked really clean and it also fell at a nice price. 
But after reviewing that watch and getting the hands-on experience with it, I was just very impressed. I think the one thing that impressed me when looking at that Trasca last year was the hardness of the case treatment on the pieces. They were very scratch resistant. It was 1200 HV on the Vickers hardness scale, which is basically matching the up tech that you're getting from Damasco and Zen watches, which starting prices at those watches are just $1,000. For Zen, it's even higher, getting closer to $2,000 to get the spec that usually had that case treatment and hardness associated with it. So for around $500, getting a screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, I think pretty attractive looks, definitely being inspired by the Explorer. I think the 1016 certainly uh, threw in some inspiration to this piece, but it did get a little bit of differentiation with the different dial colors. It was a really awesome watch, and I think I was just very impressed with Trasco overall. Uh, so that was just another brand I think just stood out to me, and I think it's a good micro brand to take a look at. Now these next two brands are brands that I think start getting into that kind of gray area, and there's a couple other ones that I'm gonna mention here on this list that start getting into that, say, more independent tier. Uh, the first one is Manta, and the only reason why I say they kind of get in that gray area is just the quality of product that they're actually producing for the price. So earlier this year, I kind of made a bold claim and said the Manta Atlas was the best micro brand that I ever reviewed on the channel. And at that point, that was certainly the case. I don't think really much has changed, uh, except there was one that I think got thrown into that mix as well, which will be the second watch I'm gonna mention here. But starting with Manta, Manta is a brand based in St. Louis, Missouri, and the owners behind the brand are also owners of Everest bands as well, which basically just produce aftermarket great quality straps for Rolex watches. So that kind of gives into a little window into the world of kind of their industry savviness and also probably why the brand has just grown so popular as of late and just the level of craftsmanship that then goes into their pieces. From a finishing standpoint with the Atlas that I reviewed earlier this year, it was a GMT watch. Love just the attention to detail with the dial work the finishing on the indices. Also just love just the tricks with the GMT uh, hand and how it kind of flows over those indices. And they're also featuring Swiss base calibers with all their movements. The finishing on the case, the bracelet is very, very good for the price. Honestly, one of the more comfy bracelets out there on the market, micro brands, mass market, I'm considering all of that uh, in that sphere of say under $2,000. The price of course is a little bit more but their watches I think are very impressive. And if you want to go see how that watch hangs up and like looks it under the macro lens, I mean, definitely check out the video from earlier this year. It was one of my favorite videos that I've done on a micro brand. I think it's probably the most views I've ever gotten in a video reviewing a micro brand. And I think it's for good reasons. A very attractive piece. I think Manta is on the path of doing some very cool things. And it also looks like they just released a new watch called the Noble, which looks like another great everyday watch in this price range around $1,500. And again, I really can't say enough about Manta. I think they're just a very fantastic brand, great approach to what they're producing and a really quality product for the price. So I kind of already alluded to that this watch here that's gonna be looking at next is kind of in that same range as the Manta and that is from a brand called Formex. So Formex got their start, their Swiss-based brand back in 1999 and really produce watches that have motorsport undertones. And I think a lot of that is seen with a lot of their pieces, but the one that has kind of gotten the most buzz is their Formex Essence. And that's the watch that probably deviates most from what the brand is producing, but really I think has become the most popular watch. I think that's for good reason. Now, a few things that stood out with the Formex Essence right away was just the overall attractiveness of the piece itself. Very photogenic watch to take video shots of, photos of, and also just to have strapped onto your wrist very comfortable bracelet, and you're definitely getting a little bit of that high horology kind of sports watch style uh, with the piece itself, but there's other things that I think it does, it's delivering for the price. First, you're getting chronometer grade movements and actually getting chronometer certified movements as well. Uh, they're featuring Salita SW200s in their watches, and those are chronometer certified, but they also have a non-chronometer version that brings down the price several hundred dollars as well to make it a little bit more attainable and being south of $1,000 with its price. The case is a little bit larger at 43 millimeters, but when strapping it on and factoring in kind of the lug to lug and the overall wearing experience, it's something that I think could work on a variety of different wrists. It would be nice to maybe shave down a couple millimeters, but still a very nice piece. And then probably the most notable thing is that suspended case, which is said to help with shock resistance. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but really kind of a cool feature and just shows that there's no corners being cut with the piece itself. And I think Formex in this range of say around a thousand dollars from a micro brand, producing some of the best quality pieces out there, no question. Now for another micro brand that I think is more back to the everyday style and looking at that kind of vintage styling, which I think they've absolutely perfected, which is Laurier. 
I've seen a lot of people talk about Laurier. I wasn't sure if the hype and kind of up talk about the brand was necessarily warranted until I saw the pieces in person, but I think they have a nice product for the price. The Falcon, I think really impressed me with just kind of bringing together a lot of that just overall design tones from years prior that maybe aren't being approached to. I think that waffle dial looks spectacular. You're getting a more wearable case, 36 millimeters. This is a brand that's founded by a, just a humble husband and wife team. They're based in New York City and they're just producing watches for watch enthusiasts because they clearly are watch enthusiasts themselves and just producing affordable vintage inspired watches. And I think their Falcon as well as some other pieces like their Neptune and their Hydra are very attractive for the price. And the brand itself I think has been very well received. I know other YouTubers have covered them. And yes, they do kind of prioritize in a thing that's probably being maybe a little overserved, which is vintage inspired sports watches but I think they're doing it very well at price ranges that I think make a lot of sense for enthusiasts. Now looking at another affordable micro brand, and I think this one does a very good job at kind of developing their own unique type of design formula that I kind of recognize immediately, and that's Notice. So about a year ago, I looked at their Notice Retrospect 2, and it was just a very nice affordable style diver watch featuring a Seiko movement within, wearable case, and it was just an attractive looking watch. It was just no nonsense. The guys who produce this watch are over in the West Coast. So they're casing up all their watches there, regulating all their watches there. And I think they just make a really nice product. And the Retrospect 2 was one of probably my favorite micro brands that I reviewed last year. I think it was in my top watches of 2019 video. And I just was really a big fan of what Notice was producing. And that was one of the standouts. So I can link down below to the review as well. But I think a really solid micro brand. Now, now to jump back up in the price range here, we're gonna look at Oak and Oscar with their Olmstead. Now, Oak and Oscar was one of the brands that was first put on my radar a few years back, one of the first micro brands that I was aware of. And I think a lot of that came down to their more cult-like following that the brand has. Yes, their watches are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I think from a design point of view, as well as just the overall kind of high touch type of brand experience that the brand tries to get across, I think can't be overstated enough. And recently I got to get some of my hands-on experience with their Olmstead, which is a really attractive looking piece. White dial, very wearable case. You're getting a Swiss base movement within the watch itself. The brand is based in Chicago. And finally, the kind of suit that I think came with notice in terms of developing their own design formula. I think Oak and Oscar does this incredibly well. Probably one of the best out of any brands out there. And the Olmstead I think was a very attractive looking piece. Great bracelet. A uh, very nice looking watch. That white dial with the orange just, in, just really, really pops. And then also having case sizes that I think are very appropriate for the mass majority out there. Now, when it comes to micro brands that I think just get it and know what watch enthusiasts want, and also are producing pretty high volume amount of products, but have very close attention to detail, so nothing is really being sacrificed, I think of Zelos watches. So Zelos is a Singapore-based brand, really prioritizing uh, diver watches, but they just recently came out with some dress watches as well. But really the backbone of what they do is just very clean, well-specced, sometimes in a lot of cases, affordable diver style watches, but they've really scaled out their collection and what they're offering across many different lineups. And I'm just always very impressed with the product that they're delivering out. Whether it's their entry level Makos, they just came out with a Turbion. Uh, they work with another third party manufacturer to develop. So they're all over the map in terms of what they're producing. But one of my favorite watches that they produce, and I think probably my favorite, is the Horizons GMT. And I just recently did a review of the Horizons GMT2 on my second channel, looking at a couple different dial versions to choose from. And I, I just think these are fantastic looking watches. 40 millimeter case, you're getting a Labore movement, Swiss base movement within, also getting a GMT complication as well. Clean different versions in terms of the different dials and also the uh, bezels that you can choose from and also coming in with a price at $900. So when you factor all that in, you want clean looks, very wearable case, elevated grade Swiss movement within it and a GMT. I think this is a very nice looking watch and I think Zealous very commonly just knows what enthusiasts wants and just produce it time and time again. But next up, we have a brand that's based in Rochester, New York with Ocean Crawler. We're gonna be looking at their Great Lakes option. So how I first got put on Ocean Crawler was probably a couple years ago. I reviewed their Core Diver as well as their Dream Diver last year. And ever since I've been kind of impressed with the brand, I think they're producing a nice product a little bit higher in the price range. Their cases are a little bit larger too, but with the watch that they're trying to go for, that retro style diver, and then there's certainly a lot of people that produce watches like it, but I think Ocean Crawler does it in a way that's a little bit different than what's being provided by the mainstream brands. But the one thing that I really liked about the Great Lakes, and this is a new option available from the brand, is the fact that the case size is way more appropriate for smaller wrists out there. You have a 39.7 millimeter case, lug to lug of 44 millimeters, you're getting a Swiss-based movement, an SW200 within, 300 meters of water resistance, 
and coming with a compressor style case, which is a lot of fun. Yes, it has certainly been done quite a bit now in the last few years by micro brands, but I think it's always good to get this type of watch uh, presented. I actually don't see a lot of mainstream brands producing as many watches of this design as you probably would expect. And I think the nice use of color, but I think overall Ocean Color has really developed a solid niche in this micro brand community. Now, next up we have a brand that has been on my radar for some time. One of my favorite micro brands out there and that's Azo Watches looking at the Sealander. So this is a watch that made an appearance in an early list video that I did back in 2018. Uh, featured in that video, I thought it was a very attractive looking piece, but also I featured it in my first micro brand video as well. So this brand was restarted after falling victim to the quartz crisis back in 2016 by two young Dutch gentlemen, having the mission to really produce vintage inspired dive watches, solid build construction and producing their watches in Germany. Now the Sealander was one that really stood out for me for a few different reasons when I first saw it. One, I really liked the overall design style of it. It was simple, but also very well done. Had a nice price around $769, case size 41 millimeters, a little bit on the thicker end, but that lug to lug at 48.8 millimeters was really solid. You're getting this Eta movement inside of here producing and regulating and casing their watches in Germany. Nice water resistance of 300 meters, has a ceramic bezel. And I think it's just one of those watches that kind of just checks off the boxes. And now looking across their different watches that they've produced since, this was their first kind of flagship model that they presented uh, to the market. Now have their Air Fighter, they have their 1972, which is another interesting looking piece. Yes, their watches are a little bit more expensive, but when you factor in that made in Germany, nice specs on their pieces, and I think just nicely designed watches. I think that all comes together to give a lot of reasoning behind that price. So now we're looking at a watch brand that has just kind of gotten on my radar in the last, say six months or so with Anne Ordain. So I've gotten a lot of requests to look at this brand a little bit more. And I have to be honest, I totally just did not really appreciate what this brand was doing. And that really comes down to kind of their bread and butter, which is enamel dials. So enameling is something that's very popular in the world of watches but very rarely is it done at this price and at this caliber. So this is a Scottish based micro brand. The guys behind the brand, really awesome guys from just exchanging emails with them. They were nice enough to send me a couple of their products earlier this year. And the watch that really stood out to me was their model two. So this watch came in price range around $1,500, nice case size, 36 millimeters. So a little more dressy SW210 inside 50 meters of water resistance and sapphire crystal. But the true, true thing that is really allowing this piece to stand out is the incredible dial. Just looking at it up close with the macro lens, you start to just see that very close attention to detail. And this process of enameling is, is just really complex. It's the process of fusing glass to metal and just takes a considerable amount of time. And they actually have a pretty in-depth just overview on their website that kind of talks through this. And for a watch that falls under $2,000, you're gonna be hard pressed to actually probably find a better looking dial for the price. All right guys, so I know that was pretty long, uh, so I apologize, but I hope that this was a helpful video and maybe giving you some insight into some brands that you were not familiar with and also some models that you were not familiar with. So if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And just so I don't make this video any longer, I had to kind of make a cutoff here in terms of the brands I was gonna look at. Uh, so I'll have more in the blog in that link in the description on my website. So I'll link down below, check that out. You'll see even more brands mentioned there. And while you're there, definitely check out the different watches and straps that I have available. All that also supports the content. And if you see something that you like and you have some questions, make sure to book a call with me. So at the top, you can just click book a call, just pick a time that works best for you. And I'll have my actual calendar on there. We can schedule something out. I've been trying to keep it pretty open so I can take more calls with you guys if you guys do have any questions. And in addition, I'd love to see comments down below. What do you think of micro brands overall? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Love to see what your thoughts are on micro brands overall. But also be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can stay up to date with content, see some great photos of watches. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.